Thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. Um, then I basically wrote a mini essay and I did cry and it was a lot. But it could just be a really bad trick and I would be sad if N.K. Jemison tricks me I present the bleakness of the stillness because everything is quite still. Hey besties, it's Joel, and today I'm going to be reading and discussing a science fantasy series that has been highly regarded. It has been talked about, reviewed, and has garnered many an accolade, and since it's my book club's current read, I thought why not read the rest of the series as well. And so for this week, I'm going to be reading The Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. I hope you're all doing very well and that you're looking after yourselves. If you've yet to take that drink of water, please do so. You must remain well and hydrated. And if you've yet to check out my Instagram nor my Twitter, I would highly recommend you go do that as well because I post some extra bookish content that you're not gonna see here. Honestly, I'm like really surprised that I haven't read any N.K. Jemisin yet. Like I've been wanting to read her books. Like I have The City We Became, uh, I also have Emergency Skin on Audible. I also recently purchased her Green Lantern like graphic novel that she did called Far Sector. I'm like seeing it underneath my desk by there. But I really wanted to get to the fifth season and get acquainted with N.K. Jemisin before I delve into any of her other works. This series has just been highly recommended by so many different people and it's definitely one that I see recommended the way that according to reviews this book tackles colonialism and imperialism in such a different way. I'm really intrigued by this series and plus I was talking to a bookseller at Mr. B's Emporium of Books in Bath and the way that they were just talking about the fifth season as well, I'm just really excited to read it. But before we get into the books, reading them, discussing them, analyzing them, etc, I do have a very quick message from the sponsor of today's video and so I'm going to throw on over to Sponsor Joel in order to tell you all about that. Hey besties, once again I'd like to thank Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. Book of the Month is a super popular monthly book service for readers located within the US with their main objective to promote new and emerging authors and to help you discover books that you'll love through curating a selection from hundreds of new and early released titles. Plus, Book of the Month is risk-free so you can skip any month, any time, and you won't be charged. For the month of April, Book of the Month have five selections for you to choose from, ranging from a World War II historical fiction to a mystery surrounding the death of an estranged sibling. But this month, the one that stood out to me was... Gaidgai by Vaishnavi Patel. Gaidgai is a retelling of the Indian epic of the Ramayan, giving a backstory to the vilified stepmother who exiled Ram. It's a tale of independence and potential defiance of destiny, and as Greek retellings are so prominent and popular, I'm ready to diversify my picks and read a retelling from another culture. I'm going to be reading the first line of Gaidgai for you now. I was born on the full moon under an auspicious constellation, the holiest of positions much good it did me. And so if that sounds great to you and you have your space shipping address then you can use the link in my description and use code FATES in order to get your first book of the month box for only $9.99. And now we can return to my experience of reading the Broken Earth trilogy. Okay so the Broken Earth trilogy as stated by the name is a trilogy of books and so the first book is the fifth season then we have the obelisk gate and then the final book in the series is the stone sky and when the fifth season was actually released, it won the Hugo Award for Best Novel, making N.K. Jemisin the first African-American writer to actually ever win an award in that category. And then, what makes it even better is that The Obelisk Gate and The Stone Sky both won Hugo Awards for the Best Novel themselves, making N.K. Jemisin the first writer to ever win a Hugo three times in a row, and also for all three books in a trilogy. And it just speaks to, like, the excitement that I have for this. Plus, since this was also picked up for an adaptation, I am excited to see like what exactly comes of this series. And so for those who are unaware, the fifth season basically takes place in a continent known as the Stillness. And in the Stillness, sometimes fifth seasons happen, which cause catastrophic events on the world. And so in this book, three bad things happen on the same day. The first thing that happens is that Essen, a woman who's living an ordinary life in a small town, comes home to find that her husband has murdered their son and kidnapped their daughter. Secondly, Sansa, which is like the world-spanning empire that has basically formed a bedrock of civilization for thousands of years, has collapsed because a multitude of its citizens have been murdered to satisfy a madman's vengeance. And then, to make things even worse, a great red rift has now opened across the stillness, spewing red ash that can literally darken the sky for centuries. Everyone's really screwed. But now Essen must pursue the wreckage of her family through this ever-changing world where resources are being fought over, wars are being started, and the world has turned into this battle royale for basic necessities. However, Essen doesn't care if the world destroys itself because she will destroy it if she has to, if she can save her daughter. I 
I cannot put into words how much I've been wanting to read this series. It's a weird thing because like when I was younger, I really wanted to read all these books, all so many books, but I never had enough money. And so I would literally work a part-time job where I was literally paid, I kid you not, like 70 pounds a month. I'm so glad like the minimum wage for like 16 year olds has gone up since then, but boy was it bad. And I literally would spend probably like half that money on books. It then became like a thing of like, what books do I prioritize? Because my reading tastes were more gravitated towards young adult when I was younger, albeit from a few different titles. I never really got the chance to read the fifth season, but now, now that my reading tastes have both evolved slash changed, and also because of booktube and because of the opportunities I've been given through doing this channel, I've been able to like explore a lot more books and more series, and it, it's, it's an appreciation kind of thing, because this is a series I've been wanting to read for so long. Wow, this intro has been going on for some time now, so I'm gonna get to reading the fifth season, and then I'll be back once I've finish with my thoughts, feelings, reactions, a little bit of analysis probably, and I just can't wait to start this journey with you. And um, so yeah, I guess I'll see you in a bit besties. Oh, hello there. Hello besties. I hope you have your cup of tea, beverage ready because... Whew. <laughs> so... Sorry, there was a bit. So, last night, I finished the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin, and I basically could not stop thinking about this book. And um, then I basically wrote, like, a mini essay on this book. You know, it's, yeah. For this book, there's just so many like layers and stuff that I had to unpack it. And so my thoughts about this book will probably be more analytical than books two and three because I can do more spoiler free wise. This book was just like brilliant, like rusting earth. Like this book was just phenomenal, a spectacular display of like speculative fiction. And I can definitely see why it won the Hugo Prize. N.K. Jemisin's writing like in invites you into the story from the very first line about the ending of the world. It delivers on immersive and detailed world building that intrigues you, with our three perspectives of Essence, Sinai, and Demaya crafting these narratives that are equally compelling, emotional, and gritty. And you don't really have all of the pieces in the beginning, but as you kind of read through the story, the pieces start coming to you slowly as they're added to the bigger picture. And then suddenly, like, big pieces of the puzzle begin to, like, snap together until suddenly it just goes, and you have everything. In my like notion page, I note down like all my proper like reader reactions, like as I'm reacting on camera. The way that I guessed a few of like the plot twists and like reveals really shook me because it only speaks to the testament of how good N.K. Jemisin's writing is because I began to notice subtle things in the way that she would describe things, in the way that she would omit certain things. And I began to question things about the world that she had crafted. And I was rewarded for my curiosity and it was really gratifying as a reader to experience that. So through this, N.K. Jemisin works to provide a multifaceted story, tackling a large range of themes from like motherhood, the use of identity, the challenge of morality, the importance of history, and the power of knowledge. We witness how systems of oppression within hierarchical structures reinforce prejudice ideas that is then perpetuated in society and education, which in turn only emphasizes the 
the system struggle to survive when the fifth season does arrive. However, at its core, the fifth season carries a unified tale of survival following three women who are Eregenines, manipulators of earth and stone as they begin to learn to harness and control their powers. And whilst they are seen as an inhuman threat by others, they display the primary instinct to survive, to live no matter the cost as despite everything, they're trying to put themselves back together after their worlds have been torn apart. Because this is the way the world ends. For the last time. The initial perspective we're introduced to is that of Essen, our primary protagonist, whose story is told in second person, which I found unusual, albeit intriguing, because I found the second person gave us this added intimacy to the narrator, and as a result, I felt more invested in the story. Her tale starts off quite bleak. There's this almost hopelessness of being alone, but then with the hope that her daughter is still living, she has this newfound purpose, this inborn need to find her and to survive with her. There's a lot of different layers to Essen's tale that really reinforce the person that she is, and it's something that, like, was done so well that there's a lot of emotion there. But her perspective depicts the harsh realities of an apocalypse that could literally last for thousands of years. And it really shows how the communities around her begin to crumble as she tackles her feelings of guilt, loss, and hopelessness. However, Essen proves time and time again that she has suffered too much, lost too much, to let a fifth season stop her from doing whatever it takes to get her daughter back. So whilst traversing the brutal landscape, she's joined by Tonki and Hoa, and these two characters are just so amazing, Hoa being like one of my favourite characters of the book entirely. He's just like a child and I would do whatever it takes to protect him, although he can probably protect himself, but their interactions provide joy and hope in a world that just seems very bleak and hopeless. But it's also Essen's role as a mother that forms an integral part of the story, its soul. A mother who's been made, unmade, and then made again. Her love for her daughter is unquestionable, undeniable. And it also provides distinct parallels to Demai and Cyanite's perspectives, which we'll be talking a little bit about in a bit. But it links to another thing I loved about the fifth season, and it was the repetition of history. As in the prologue, the narrator states that, this is what you must remember, the ending of one story is just the beginning of another. This has happened before, after all. It's both foreshadowing to the nature of this story, and it provides evidence to support a theory of how in-universe histories are also happening again. This is why I also believe that the fifth season exists after our time period, because I feel like it's a case of repeated history in this sense. But speaking of the world of the fifth season, the stillness is what it's called. I think it's one that exists after us, but, but there's like a small chance it could occur in the first 14 million years that Earth existed for certain reasons that I can't go into because it's spoilery, but N.K. Jemison has basically defined the meaning of world building. It's the way that this world building is integrated is just so seamless, natural, purposeful, and impressive. It's almost as though the stillness is a character in and of itself, with beautiful descriptions of its physical geography, to its long history of seasons and stone lore. It truly feels like we're within the story and being immersed in this tale. And brutal as it is intriguing, the world presents a hierarchical caste system of communities which incidentally promote the prejudice, oppression, and killing of Eregenines, who are perceived as like inhuman, feral abominations because they can practice the manipulation of earth and stone. And it's through Demaya's perspective that we can see elements of this internal form of colonialism through a form of white saviorism combined with strategic manipulation. And so in the beginning, Demaya, who's an Eregenine, is handed to Guardian Shafa, who basically then takes takes her to Fulcrum, which is the place you can be trained as an Eregeny. Throughout their journey to Fulcrum, Shafa basically frames himself as this white saviour who basically saves the poor Eregeny from being murdered by the brutal mob, and by delivering her to Fulcrum to be educated, she can become someone of use. She can become someone that they want her to be, and thus become more acceptable to society. Demaya is also advised through a story that if she cannot control herself and her abilities, she will be killed for the benefit of everyone else. And it was story Stories like these that were used to manipulate and deter the oppressed from defying the system. This in turn then categorizes an oppressive group to the Eregenines, who in turn use the collective fear of the other in order to both control how the Eregenines live, but also continually perpetuate this fear so that their importance remains valued and relevant. Her survival lies in how she changes under the abusive and manipulative training that she has at Fulcrum, and later internalizing hatred about being Origin due to the fear of Fulcrum and the Guardians themselves. However, 
However, however, it is through Cyanite that we're able to witness like a breakage of this illusion. Cyanite begins as someone who is a fourth ringer member in Fulcrum and they fully believe in the system and believe that like they need to be controlled. However, she is then tasked to make a child with Alabaster in the hopes that they'll create a origin that's more powerful, more useful to the society. However, it's through Alabaster, a 10th ringer and one of the highest ranked at Fulcrum, that Cyanite's perception of Fulcrum is challenged and eventually erodes away. It's the process of peeling away everything that she has internalized and realizing that she needs to set herself free from this oppressive system in order to survive. Oh. Cyanite's perspective is probably my favorite out of the three, and this was probably the perspective that I think had the most intrigue, purely because we delved into like the magic system and practicing Oregini, but then also the personal connections with Alabaster, Inan, and Corundum will like inevitably tug at the heartstrings, and it does hurt, and I did cry, and it was a lot. Overall, the fifth season is a phenomenal first installment into this series, and it's just a testament to what speculative fiction can be. I'm I'm really excited to see where this series goes next as we now get into the obelisk gate. I'm just really excited to see how Essen's journey continues and see everything that comes next. And so yeah, I'm gonna get to reading this and I'll be back in a little bit and so I can give you all my thoughts. So, see you in a bit. Okay, so this morning I finished The Obelisk Gate. It's a brilliant continuation of the fifth season. I found that like N.K. Jemisin's writing style really came through again in this one and the world building again was stellar. We really got an added development in things. I definitely do think this is definitely more of like a slow burn type of story and I think it primarily serves to like set up the main story for book three. I wouldn't say this class is as like second book syndrome but it does have elements of of that, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. It was still a really good book. It continues the next act of Essen's tale and continues the conversation of the themes addressed in the first book, whilst also reevaluating and recontextualizing them in new ways that weren't considered in the first book. And so we're led to ask further questions like, you may love your child, but do they feel that you love them? And also, what makes people equal in a community? Like, how do we make equality in a community? Again, it's such a cleverly crafted novel that there are again like these continuations of parallels and that the investigations that I go into I am rewarded for like again there are theories that I had and were proven correct for. There's one specific theory that hasn't been answered and I'm like wanting it to be answered in book three but it kind of already answered itself by the way that it presented itself but it could just be a really bad trick and I would be sad if N.K. Jemison tricks me but through Essence perspective we delve deeper into the main plot and develop more of the world building as we kind of figure out more about Essen's growing power and what this means for the wider world. But we're also introduced to a new community of characters that were introduced in the fifth season but more established 
here. I loved Yika as a character more specifically, purely because I loved the way that she has this non-fulcrum training. It kind of challenges Essence's preconceived notions of people who don't train at fulcrum, and also reworks her brain to think in this way, which in turn helps her later down the line with conflict, because she kind of needs to learn to like accept people outside of her own perspective. I think it comes with the fact that she is oppressed because she is a regenine, but then she in turn starts to look down on others who haven't been trained at fulcrum, which kind of has this added sense of superiority, but then it also kind of shows that it is not the only way, and there are ways that aren't framed in that certain direction. But also Yika advocates constantly throughout this novel about an integrated society of origins and stills, who basically don't have magic whatsoever. And basically it is such an amazing passion that she has, and especially with the way that this community forms throughout the novel, it's definitely something that you see becoming more and more realistic. But then also we get to see the kind of conflict that comes with survival, both internal and within the community, and external, and things to do with that. Again, I think there was a few hard-hitting moments within this book that did drive me close to tears. However, I didn't cry in this one. I didn't cry in this one. Probably might cry in the stone sky, but however, 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 main event. I was literally so excited to see that the other main perspective that we got in this novel was Nassen, which is Essen's lost daughter. We do get like another perspective, but it's not really there as much, and I don't really want to touch upon that because most of like their perspective is spoilery. Nassen is such a really well-written character in the sense that we see her journey from seeing her brother's dead body to who we see her become at the end of the novel, how she journeys with her father and things happen from there. I think her father is just heavily misguided because he believes in the system that believes that origins are evil, and so finding out that his children were one basically like cancelled out all the love that he had for them. He, he tackles with this kind of thing with Anasin throughout the novel, and it's it's an interesting thing to see, but also you're sympathetic and you feel sad for Anasin because it's basically delaying the inevitable like decay of their relationship. Anasin's perspective was especially interesting the way that she grapples with her powers and and that she's quite advanced in her abilities. I can help but feel happy for her, but then at times frustrated with some of the decisions that she made and the people that she chose to hang with. However, 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 there is again like this distinct parallel of repeated history between Nassen and Essen. It's really intriguing to see the kind of subversion that Jemison employs when deviating from Essen's narrative with Nassen and seeing potentially what could have happened with Essen. Basically, had she not met a particular character, I think she probably would have ended up like Nassen as we see her in The Obelisk Game. But again, this basically sets up the novel now for what is going to be the final novel of The Stone Sky. Kind of giving me Elden Ring feels with this kind of certain plot, with how it could end, you know? Because there's one particular ending of Elden Ring that matches with, like, a prospective ending. Let us finish the Broken Earth trilogy. I'll be back with my whole thoughts and feelings about the book, the series as a whole, and then we can just wrap up this vlog and, yeah. So I guess I'll see you in a bit, besties. Oof. Oh, okay. Hello. Hello, besties. So as of finishing The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin, I have read the entire Broken Earth 
trilogy. So I want to give my initial thoughts on The Stone Sky. I haven't really written anything down, so I'm just going to freeball it. But I have a similar feeling with this book that I had with the previous book, The Obelisk Gate. This book was written really well. I love N.K. Jemisin's like language and writing style. I think that she has such a way with conveying a tale. And I think I've almost fallen in love with the second person through this book, and especially the purpose that it serves that we find out in the kind of epilogue of this story. I found it to be like really, really good. We really got to see the culmination of Essen's journey as a mother and motherhood and seeing everything come to like a climax in a very satisfying way. Not the way that I hoped, but it kind of makes sense in relation to Essen's character, Nessen as a whole as well. And also really brings forth the kind of notions that have been established from like the very first novel with a lot of the themes of like history, the repetition of history. Because we also get these like flashback chapters about the origins of the very first season called The Shattering, and then also the origins of some otherworldly beings within this series. I have like my critiques as well about this book. This book again was very much slower paced. However, I think in this case it became a detriment to the novel. I didn't really feel like there was a build up towards the climax. And so like whilst I feel like the climax was very like powerful in and of itself, and so I wouldn't really call it anticlimactic, I just feel like the build up wasn't there. It just didn't have that extra oomph. It kind of started a bit too late for the build up. And I think as well with these kind of like interlude chapters that we get from Hoa's perspective, it... <sighs> Some of them were, like, it was good to get this kind of added history. However, a lot of the time, I just did not know what was, like, kind of going on. It kind of took me out of the story a bit because I was, like, so invested in Essen and her daughter that I was just a bit like, oh, okay, I don't feel like we needed to know as much as we got. I really want to talk about Essen as a protagonist because we really see her kind of, like, accept the fact that she doesn't need to, like, play to, like, the vengeful woman stereotype anymore and she should start embracing her community and the people around her because she's going to care for these people and it's really amazing to kind of see her kind of change slightly in that regard. I wouldn't say that she's completely changed. She does come across as unlikable at points. However, it was really interesting to kind of get that introspection from Essen. Like, Nassen has this kind of, like, anti-hero arc going on, and I really enjoyed it. Nassen's very much that child age of just, like, she can come across as childish at points, but you kind of forgive that because she is a child. And so, like, seeing her have this kind of, like, moment of just, like, realizing was just very needed and I was super happy about that. Like, I really enjoyed that. I just feel like this novel kind of like wrapped everything up nicely. However, however, I also do feel like it didn't need to move as slow as it did. Again, that's just personal preference and I think it's because I'm like also used to like kind of like more fast paced stuff. So I'm kind of like liking fast paced stuff a lot more. So overall, that is the Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jamison. I have had so much fun reading this series. I found basically a new favorite like science fantasy book of all time. I think like this book specifically is basically amazing. It really balances balances like world building, plot, character, and just like a whole plethora of theme as well. And whilst this one had kind of like faster paced because of the different perspectives that we got, I feel like this one definitely made it a bit slower, but I feel like that's to like represent the bleakness of the stillness because everything is quite still. And so I would definitely recommend like still continuing on with the series if you've read the fifth season because you still get a really great story out of this. And so overall, the Broken Earth trilogy really tackles the theme of survival in a broken world and also how systems of oppression can also reinforce a broken world in and of itself. And I think this series really emphasizes the kind of importance of unity and community. And yeah, I just feel like it was just so good. And so yeah, that is basically 
basically another series reading vlog done. If you have any recommendations of any series you want to see me read next, be sure to leave that down in the comment section down below. I know Mistborn will probably be my next series reading vlog because that's a series that I have promised to get to since January of last year. And so if you've read the fifth season or continued on with the series, I would love to see your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let's get a discussion going. Let's talk about a multitude of different things. And again, a massive thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. If you have a US based shipping address, then you can use the code FATES in order to get your first Book of the Month box for only $9.99. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button so you're notified whenever I upload next. And you can find all my social medias in the description down below for you so you can uh, follow me on every single other platform. And yeah, I am basically ready to like read. I don't know. I don't know what I want to read now. This is the thing. I'll figure it out. I always do. And so yeah, I guess until the next time. Bye besties.